In boat building, there's a method called spiling, and it is the process of determining the shape of a plank that goes on your boat. In order to do this, you need a good pair of compass dividers. This old school pair of dividers just isn't going to cut it. So I made my own dividers, ones that lock and stay in place. So stick around and I'll show you how I made these. To get started with our compass dividers, I did a drawing to scale and uh, collected some materials uh, for the project. Uh, the, the compass dividers will be made up of one leg will be steel, and I've got this piece of 3 16 inch uh, steel here that I'll be using for that. And the other side will be wood, and the wood will be um, one of three choices. I have oak, wedge wood, and Brazilian cherry. Now, wood is measured on a hardener scale called a Jenga scale. And oak comes in at 1360. Wedge comes in at 1630. And Brazilian cherry comes in at 2350. So I wanted a good hardwood because I'm going to be actually putting threads in the wood. So I've decided that the oak is not uh, hard enough. So I'm not going to use that. Um, the wedge uh, is plenty hard, so I'm going to use that. And also, I kind of like the contrast that it has compared to the Brazilian cherry. So the hardware that I'm going to be using for this will be a bronze sleeve bearing. And this bronze sleeve bearing is a half an inch on the outside and 3 eighths of an inch on the inside. And that will go like that on the dividers. And that will be held on with a couple of uh, flathead 8 32nd screws. So those will go here, like so. The pencil will then go into this uh, bronze sleeve and it'll be uh, pinched in there with a um, uh, lamp knob. It's also called a battery head uh, screw. And that will go here. Uh, the threading that I mentioned will be right here, which will catch this radius off of the metal arm. And we'll use another one of those knurled uh, lamp screws there. Uh, for the pivot point up here, we're going to use what's called a post and screw. Uh, and the post and screw um, goes together like so. And you can see that it will um, pinch itself, but not over tighten. And that will go right here at the pivot point. So uh, our first step to uh, uh, building the compass dividers is to take the piece of steel and cut the metal leg out. I began by cleaning the milling scale off of the metal blank. This gave me a bright finish to add machinist bluing. I used a blue sharpie to get the same result. After cutting out the shape of the metal leg from a copy from a plan, I was able to etch that shape onto the steel. I also used a pattern to locate the pivot point, which I marked with a center punch. After locating the center for the radius for the locking arc, I then drilled a 7 30 seconds hole at the pivot point. I used the same drill bit to also create the radius where the leg meets the locking arc. I then used a quarter inch drill bit to drill a series of holes along the locking arc. This was the first step in cutting out the metal leg shape. I used a hacksaw where the cuts were critical. 
being careful to leave the pattern line visible. I did use my grinder with a cutoff wheel to rough out the majority of the shape. I could have used a hacksaw for all of this. However, I have a lot of experience and control with the grinder, so I felt comfortable using it. After having the shape roughed out, I then turned to my Dremel tool with a cutoff disc for the more delicate cuts. I then used the disc and belt sander to get as close as I could to the finished line. I made sure that I quenched the piece often in water as not to lose its temper. I used a 12 inch bastard cut file to draw a file down to the scribed line. I used a semi round file to clean up the inside radius of the locking arc. I then finished up with a smoothing file on all of the surfaces. Well, uh, now they have the basic shape that uh, I'm looking for. Uh, I've got pretty much all filed down to the scribe lines. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to use uh, 3 16 was to, that, so it would be a little beefier and stronger. My intention is to round off the bottom or where the point would be. Uh, but the one thing that seems just a little bit uh, too thick is this uh, radius piece here that will hold it when it's um, in position. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is to file down each side of this about a 30 second so that I end up with about uh, one eighth of an inch of it being thick. So um, that'll be the next operation is to uh, get this uh, milled down to about one eighth of an inch thick. I put some bluing on the edge and then scribed one thirty second in on each side with my calipers. I took the bulk of the material off with my right angle grinder. I then followed up with a mill file to get the desired thickness. After achieving the 1 8 thickness on the locking arc, I turned my attention to smoothing and sanding the flat sides of the metal leg. Well, I'm pretty happy with the general shape of it. And it fits plan well. So the next uh, step is to uh, round off this uh, part of the leg. Well, now that we've completed the uh, metal leg, we can now turn our attention to the wooden leg and take this Wedgwood blank and cut it down. I started by cutting the Wedgwood blank into a 9 16 inch slice, which is three times the 3 16 inch metal leg. I then cut a 3 16 inch slot in the top of the blank to accept the 3 16 inch metal leg. Using a paper pattern, I laid it out so that the slot for the locking arc was at 90 degrees to the wood blank. I also took this opportunity to mark out the shape of the wood arm and mark the center of the pivot point. Having these slot marks 
allowed for the surface of the edge to be perpendicular to the drill press. Using a 1 8 inch drill bit, I drilled a series of holes to later become the locking arc slot. It was then time to cut out the shape of the leg on the small bandsaw. After using a 1 16th inch drill bit for a pilot hole to line up the two sides of the wooden leg, I used a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit to countersink each side 1 16th of an inch deep. I then use a 732nd bit to drill the pivot hole that will match the hole in the steel leg. I cleaned up the shape of the wood leg on the disc sander. I used a mill file to clean up the slot and where the steel leg fit in. I then test fitted it making sure that everything fit well. Next step then is to attach the bronze sleeve bearing. On the disc sander, I flattened one side of the bearing so that the drill bit for the tapped 8 32nd hole wouldn't drift. After drilling and countersinking one of the holes, I attached the sleeve bearing. I then drilled the second hole with the two attached together as to get a true alignment of the 832nd tapped holes. With the sleeve bearing attached, I then drilled the hole to accept the 832nd threads. I also did the same to the wood leg at the point of the locking knob. I then ran the tap through both holes. I used a hand rest to round over the wooden handle. Removing these sharp edges made it more comfortable in my hand and look better. The last operation with the sharpened a point on the end of the metal leg. I saved this for last as I was concerned in handling it with a sharp point while working on the tool. After making all the components, I sanded each item with varying grits of sandpaper, starting with 80 grit and working my way up to 800 grit for the metal parts. I then used some polishing compound to give them a good bright finish. Now that we have all of our uh, pieces made, uh, it's time for assembly of our compass dividers. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention was the wedge. I finished it with just simply some paste wax. It's a fairly dense wood and the paste wax really just gave it a nice finish by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is to attach our bronze bearing, aka the pencil holder. All right, uh, then we will put one of our knurled knobs in there to hold the pencil. We're going to attach it to the metal leg. Line that up, put our post and screw in there. And we're going to add the other knurled knob up here where we can tension it. Add a pencil. We'll put it together here so that the two points meet, like so. And 
there we have it. Uh, our finished divider compass. Uh, it turned out pretty nice. Uh, it really feels pretty nice on my hand. I'm glad that I used the um, uh, heavier steel leg there because it has a really a nice weight to it. Uh, one of the other things that I did was I made a steel leg to fit in there uh, so that the dividers, they could, instead of just being a compass, it could also be a divider. Um, got a little notch there for that to lock in. Um, <clears throat> so this was just a uh, 5 16 inch steel rod that I tapered on. Um, if you like to see how I tapered uh, this, uh, I did that. It's the same operation that I did when I made the awl. Uh, so you can check out that video. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. Um, uh, better than I actually probably expected. So um, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, uh, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please sub subscribe because there'll be more videos like this coming out. Um, so as always, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful.